setup of the devices uh, with the Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus. So here we have the GPIO extension board and then we have several in inputs and several outputs. So let's see first the what are the inputs. So we have a PIR sensor here, then a limit switch here. This is one button which is working as an input. This is button one. This is the second button. This is button two as an input. This is another input which is a read sensor. And what is a read sensor? I have uh, uh, written about it in the previous slide of this video. And this is another input which is a line detector. And you can also read it from the previous slide in this video. So these are the inputs to this uh, system. What are the outputs? The outputs are here. We have one LED here, which is LED 1. The second LED. And then we have another buzzer as an output. And then there is one DC motor. So you can see we have four outputs and six inputs. From the GPI extension board and the Raspberry Pi with this extension cable, the Raspberry Pi is connected over there. So let's see how the program works. Here is the program we can see on the screen. So these uh, we have several if else loops here. So what happens? Let's go and see what happens when we first press the button one. So what will happen? That the the uh, the LED one should go on and motor should rotate clockwise until the limit switch is pressed. So if we press the button one and the limit switch is also pressed, then so nothing happens. So let's see if our program is uh, working as we have defined in this logic. So I will go and press the button one and see what happens there is the button one I'm pressing it and we can see that this motor is running and then what happens if you press the limit switch it goes off so this is working what should happen when we press button two so it says here we go to the next one uh, it says that the LED two should be on and then motor actually rotates anti-clockwise until the limit switch is pressed. So if the limit switch is pressed and we press button 2, so nothing should happen. Let's test it. We press button 2. We can see that the LED 2 and on until we press the limit switch okay sorry about that that the video uh, was gone all right um, then we say we have uh, actually uh, okay it's, uh, it's wrong it should be a read sensor we have a read sensor which uh, de uh, detects magnetic field and if uh, the read sensor detects the magnetic field then the motor should rotate clockwise so let's go and test it. I will take a magnet, a freeze, freeze magnet, and put it on the read sensor. And we can see that our motor is okay. So this is working. All right. And then line finder. If we put a, a light. Uh, or reflected surface on top of the line finder sensor which is this one so what should happen that the active buzzer we have a buzzer and I have kept it disconnected because the sound is quite intense so for the last two tests which is basically this one uh, with the line finder and then the PIR sensor so it detects uh, body movement then these things will activate the buzzer so 
the power cable or the neutral cables so the ground cable of the buzzer was taken off I put it back okay because it's detecting me the pitch sensor detected my hand and it started to okay let it finish so I can explain it again so when the peep EIR sensor will detect a movement of a human or a hit, uh, yeah so it will blink the LED 1 LED 2 and the buzzer will be active so let's see I will move my hand in front of the field sensor and what happens okay and then the same goes comes with the, with the line detector let it finish I'll slowly move the my white uh, white paper on top of the line finder sensor which is the rightmost one and let's see if the active buzzer is active again or not yep this is working because you can see that the LEDs are not blinking but the buzzer is active I remove it I put it back I remove it so all the logics are working pretty good and it detected my hand again when I moved up. Alright, thanks for watching the demo.